Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 48. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a great weekend. Uh, in today's Tip of the Day, I am going to talk a little bit about some basic animation topics. And this is something that I haven't done much of before because I don't like to do tutorials on a subject that I don't feel um, completely comfortable with. Uh, however, I think that I can provide some good insight into how you can use certain basic techniques to improve the quality of some of your source filmmaker animations. One of the things that I want to talk about first is a, is a very basic concept called slow in, slow out. Uh, and there is a secondary concept called fast in, fast out. But I want to talk about slow in, slow out because it's one that I, I think that you'll end up using more. The idea of this is that objects in the real world don't move the way that they typically will if you don't apply the right techniques in an animation tool. And if you look at, say, for example, most people's first videos with Source Filmmaker or similar animation tools, you will notice that the animations tend to be very robotic and stiff. And you might not even be able to point to why. But a lot of times what you're going to be able to find out is that it is because there was no consideration given to the way people actually move in the real world or how objects really move in the real world. And by way of example, I'm going to just play this animation of a uh, ball bouncing vertically that I, I put together. So just very quickly, we play it. Okay. And it doesn't actually look bad, but if you notice, it looks wrong. It, it's just not quite right. And it's because it is not moving in the way an object really does in the real world. Uh, if you notice at the beginning, it goes from not moving at all to immediately moving at its top speed. There's no... There's no acceleration. And consider like if I was holding that ball and I let go of it, it wouldn't just instantly be moving at its maximum speed. It would take a moment to accelerate. Now, given the distance between the ball and the floor, it's not a huge amount of acceleration, but it is still there. And in fact, it is going to be accelerating the entire way to the floor because it will never achieve terminal velocity in uh, that time. So it will actually be continuously accelerating all the way until it hits the ground. Now, I don't know if you necessarily need to achieve perfect parity with something like that, but you do have to consider how objects move in the real world. Also consider that this is a soccer ball, and when it hits the ground, it is going to rebound. Now, it is somewhat softer than some other objects you might drop on the ground, so it will absorb some of that impact, and that will take some time. So when it hits the ground, if you, you, know, if you think about dropping a soccer ball or a basketball and it bounces back up, it does it very quickly, but it is not instantaneous. And if you were to watch it uh, captured on video, you would see that there is a very slight hesitation at the bottom of each bounce as the ball, and in fact, the ball actually squishes a bit. I'm, I'm not going to animate that or show you how to do that, but... The idea is that there is a, a pattern to this that starts slowly and ends slowly, slow in, slow out. And so the maximum speed is achieved between the keyframes of at the top and the bottom, or in the case of somebody moving, I used a ball because it's very simple to show the concepts, but in the case of somebody moving, like say somebody wants to move their arm or lift their, lift their arm up or wave at somebody, it is not going to be a linear progression from not moving to moving at maximum speed to stopping. That's, that's a very robotic, stiff motion and it it does not give the sense of a realistic movement and so you want to consider that as you're animating your your models in space is how do things really move in the real world and how do you achieve similar effects and and luckily the source filmmaker gives us a lot of tools for that if you're in the graph editor what I've done is I've just selected the soccer ball and in this case I have just selected position Z in this case because that is the vertical space and so I'm just animating the one curve. There are a lot of other positions, a lot of other channels I could be animating, but I just want to do that. And as you can see, it's it's done with these very linear uh, flat uh, um, curves. It just goes down, instantly rebounds, and goes up and comes back. So I've selected all of these by clicking and dragging them. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the uh, linear tangents button. That's what produces this. Next, let's see what happens if we try flat tangents. Now, for, for reference, these little lines here, these beige lines that you see on each of these keyframe nodes, those are tangents. And they affect, if I grab one, they affect how the curve is applied. Okay? So if I just grab a bunch of keyframes and say I want flat tangents, the, the tangents are flat, like so. They are flat across. And there's no, uh, um, you know, there's no, it's an equal distribution of weight applied to both sides of the curve. And now let's see what happens when we play this. Okay, that's a bit better when you look at it. There's, 
It's not perfect, and it has other problems than it did before, but it certainly looks better than it did. Now let's see what we do if we get spline tangents. And spline tangents tend to work a little bit differently. If you notice, these ones here tend to be a little flatter, but as we go here, they are uh, tipped a little bit. And this is because the weights of the tangents are applied, or the orientation of the tangent is applied based on where the next node is, so it tends to, to tip in favor of that. It's a very simplistic explanation, but spline tangents produce a slightly different effect than a uh, flat tangent. And if we now look at it, that's I think that's even better. It's definitely not perfect, but it is better. Now let's have some fun with things like step tangents. And this is obviously not going to be right. If we just look at this, it just teleports it back and forth, which is interesting, but not really what we want. So the best effect that we've gotten so far has been with these spline tangents. And uh, again, it's not perfect. And the reason is because it's still not quite achieving the effect that I want. And that is, it just doesn't seem quite right. And I think one of the things, it's hesitating too long at the top of the bounce, first off. So how do I affect that? If I want to make this still have a slight hesitation as it goes to the top, then turns around and comes back down, I need to adjust the weight of these tangents. And I can do that by clicking and dragging with the control, or excuse me, not with the control, clicking and dragging with the middle mouse button, which will affect the weight of the tangent, okay? And uh, if you, if you uh, need to make sure that the tangents are weighted, it, you need to click this button here, weighted tangents. If I click unweighted tangents, it just affect it changes it to uh, to these ones with the clear handles, and I cannot affect the size of it. See, I can affect how much weight is applied, but I cannot affect how much. Uh, I can affect excuse me the direction, but I cannot affect the weight. So you need to select the uh, the keyframe and select uh, weighted tangents, and it gives you these solid uh, handles. And then you can do this to apply a slightly, and I'm even going to try and get a little trickier here, and I'm going to change the curve by applying the weight so that the uh, it slows down a little bit and then at the top of the curve it hesitates. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, you know that I think that looks a lot better. Now I am not going to spend the next 30 minutes going through every niggling little detail of how to make this look perfect but uh, I did want to show you the concepts of slow in and slow out and how it makes a profound difference in the way something might be perceived. If you do this with these linear tangents, you get that very mechanical look. And if you use uh, spline tangents, you get a, a much a much more organic look, but you're still going to need to adjust it. And you can also do things like if you have these weighted tangents, you'll notice that they tend to move together. And if you press the control key and then click and drag, you can break them apart so you can apply weights to them separately. So you can produce effects like this if you want, which which would be a little weird, but you know you get the idea is that you can you can um, do it one you can have the the tangents move together or you can have the tangents move independently if you use the control and drag it around. The idea and uh, is to to give a realistic look to your animations by taking into account how objects move in the real world. And again, that's because they don't start at their maximum acceleration and then instantly rebound. If you're dropping a ball, it will slowly it will accelerate and then it will continue to accelerate until it hits the ground. Then it, a lot of that force will be absorbed and there will be a moment of, of impact. And for harder objects, that's going to be a shorter duration of time. It's going to be a sharper curve. You know, Think about dropping a croquet ball versus dropping a beach ball. The beach ball is going to take longer at the bottom of the bounce. And uh, by just giving some thought to how an object would really move in the real world, you can definitely apply some really nice effects to improve the, the verisimilitude, the, the accuracy and realism of your source filmmaker animations. And uh, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be good enough to fool the human eye. And that is something that you will find there is a good enough state you'll get to. And as you get better, you will, you will be able to apply these effects much more easily uh, to great effect. At least that's been my experience, and, and I'm learning all the time. So I hope that this has been useful. That has been, excuse me, your Source Filmmaker tip of the day number 48, slow in and slow out. Uh, and I look forward to seeing your animations. I uh, am Jimmer Linz. I hope this was useful. And I will see you tomorrow. In the meantime, enjoy using Source Filmmaker.